guys welcome back to another breakdown so i'm gonna show you guys everything that you need to know to get every single question right when it comes to the mcat yes i said every question right okay not for the cars obviously okay cars is another beast i do not give cars advice all right but for the bb and cp this is how you get every single question right so pay attention listen up all right I'm going to show you guys how to break this down. I'm going to show you guys where to highlight. I'm going to show you guys how to make all these details make sense. I'm going to show you guys how to pick the best answer, okay? This is, oh, before I go ahead and do this, do this on your own first, okay? So read this passage. All right, pick your answer, write it down. Pick your answer, write it down. Pick your answer, write it down. Pick your answer, write it down, okay? See where you went right and see where you went wrong. That's how you improve your score. You look at your mistakes, at what you did wrong, okay? Optimize yourself. Optimize yourself to the max. That's how you get those huge score jumps. I know what I'm talking about. Anyways, here we go. Let's do this. Cooperative binding is a special case of allosteric regulation. Okay, you should know what cooperative binding is, guys. You should know that. It occurs when the affinity of a for a ligand changes depending on the amount of ligand already bound. I'm not going to highlight this. I already know this. This stipulation requires a molecule to have multiple binding sites and quaternary structure. Depending on the interactions between the active sites, the macromolecule could exhibit positive cooperativity, negative cooperativity, or non-cooperativity. Positive cooperativity occurs when the binding of one ligand increases the affinity for other ligands. For instance, hemoglobin is made up of four subunits. Each deoxyhemoglobin unit has a rather low affinity for oxygen, but once one of the subunits binds with molecular oxygen, the hemoglobin changes from a tense to relaxed conformation. In the latter state, hemoglobin has a higher affinity to oxygen. All right, I'm going to highlight this. I remember this from my classes, but I'm just going to highlight it just to be certain that it's the relaxed that has the higher affinity for oxygen. Certain conditions such as lowered pH alter this equilibrium in the body by promoting the stability of the tense state of hemoglobin. Okay, so lower pH favors the tense state of hemoglobin. All right. Negative cooperativity occurs when the binding of one ligand decreases the affinity for other ligands. The enzyme glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase and its substrate nicotine adenine dinucleotide. All right, so this and this exhibit this type of relationship involved in the sixth step of glycolysis. GAPDH has four possible active sites. The dissociation constants K for each site are listed below in table one. So first site, second site, third site, fourth site. These are the dissociation constants all right you should know how to read dissociation constants you should know that you should know what a high dissociation constant means you should know what a low dissociation constant means you should know that a high kd means low affinity and you should know that a low kd means high affinity non-cooperativity occurs when the amount of ligand bound to the molecule has no effect on the other active sites this relationship is governed by statistical and entropical factors Okay, a lot of review here, uh, pretty easy passage, this should be quick, let's do this. GAPDH converts an aldehyde into a carboxylic acid in order to change NAD plus to NADH. Which of the following is true regarding this reaction in humans? Okay, I'm just going to write it out just so I can visualize it, because I'm a visual learner, like 99% of the population, all right, <laughs> not 97, but... All the students I've been with, they're all visual learners, okay? So, aldehyde, oh, sorry. Aldehyde, let's say, and then this aldehyde then becomes carboxylic acid, okay? So, it's going to carboxylic acid. NAD plus has to come in and become NADH. So the aldehyde's oxidized and the NAD plus is reduced. Aldehyde is reduced? No, aldehyde is oxidized. NAD plus is oxidized? No, NAD plus is reduced. 
NAD plus gains two electrons and one proton. This is true, okay? I know it may seem a little um, a little unordinary because I know you're so used to seeing NAD plus to NADH in textbooks and pathways, but really, it's this. It's really this. All right, what does this mean? Well, the H here coming in, that carries an electron, okay? And this H actually carries two electrons, all right? There's two electrons. Why do we need two electrons? Well, because we have two positive charges, so it has to balance it out. All right, you have two positive charges and two electrons whenever you have these reactions going on. That's why in the ETC, all right, the first one is NAD plus to NADH. I'm sorry, NADH to NAD plus. All right. We're giving away two electrons, okay? So two electrons to balance out those two positive charges. So that's what's happening in C. Gains two electrons and one proton. All right. The carboxylic acid BKA 2.9 is mostly in its protonated form. This is also wrong because... <clears throat> This enzyme is in the human body at physiological pH. Physiological pH is like 7.3. That is above the pKa. So it's likely that that carboxylic acid is going to be deprotonated. All right. Whenever the pH is above the pKa, the group is deprotonated. So the answer for here is C. Which of the following could affect any of the association constants for hemoglobin? Decrease in temperature, yes, that would. Adding NH3, yes, that's acidic. They told us that lower pH can alter the stability of hemoglobin and making it into the tense state, thus affecting the dissociation. Three, increasing the concentration of oxygen. No, this would not do anything. Okay, it has the affinity for oxygen. Okay, also, if we increase the concentration of oxygen is just going to be balanced out in the K-equiv. All right, do Le Chatelier's principle. Okay, Le Chatelier's principle. All right, so it's, yeah. Yeah, okay. It's one and two. All right, one and two only. If you want me to make a video on Le Chatelier's principle regarding concentrations of substrates and all that, let me know. I'll be more than happy to make a video on that. Okay, let's keep going. What is the equilibrium constant for the binding of the fourth NAD plus to GAPDH? All right, let's look at the fourth. We have 1.5 times 10 to the fifth. They're asking for the binding. All right, and they're, we're given dissociation constant. So how do we find the binding from the dissociation constant? Well, you take the reciprocal of this. All right, so 1 divided by 1.5 times 10 to the fifth all right that's going to be the binding constant all right and i for the sake of time i'm just going to use my calculator you guys should know i'm sure you guys know how to do the math all right you guys are in college so i'm just going to do one divided by 1.5 times 10 to the fifth okay and i get 6.66 Six six sixty six thousand six hundred sixty six, which is six point seven times ten to the six. All right, so the answer here is D. When GADPH binds the first molecule of NAD plus, a series of oxidation reduction reactions occur, in which G three P is phosphorylated and brought to a higher energy level. Which of the following is true concerning these processes? The binding of NAD plus increases the spontaneity of the overall reaction. No. All right, it's the ATP being hydrolyzed that drives this process. Okay, this is actually an endergonic process. The whole GADPH with the NAD, okay, that reaction together, the NAD plus binding on the GAPDH, that is endergonic and it's coupled to ATP hydrolysis so we can make that reaction favorable. All right, so this is true. It is an endergonic process. G3P stabilizes the transition state and the binding of NAD plus and increases the reaction rate. All right, this is true, but we're talking about the higher energy. 
all right when we break that atp g3p is now a higher energy compound all right that phosphate has high energy why does phosphate have high energy well look if you have a phosphate phosphorus here let's say bounded to oxygens here okay you have a lot of repulsion we have a negative charge next to a negative charge next to a negative next to a negative all right there's a lot of repulsion going on here they are very high energy it's unstable glyceraldehyde so this one oh, i'm sorry this one is wrong the binding of nad plus results in a more stable enzyme nad plus complex no remember more stable would mean less energy they're talking about high energy so 52 is b all right, and that's it for this one, guys. I'm going to, after passage 10 and after the BB section, I'm going to be doing the AMC stuff. Okay, these are very good practice. I recommend for you guys to watch all these videos. They're definitely going to help you. They're going to make you a master, a master of passage breakdown and a master of picking the right answer. All right, so hit the subscribe button, comment down below if you're interested in working one-on-one -on -one with me inside MK University. Go to the comment section, click on the link, fill out the application. All right, and if it seems like we're a good fit, I'll invite you into MK University. I'll show you exactly in MK University how to hit your target score in half the time. Okay, I'll show you also how many other students have hit their target scores doing that. What I just tell you in MK University, just following step by step what to do in there. Just it's push button push button results just do what they say in mk university and you will hit your target score it's guaranteed absolutely guaranteed all right i'll see you guys in the next video